Well, I'm Lifeblood. This is George G. And the time is right. Welcome to today's guest, strong and powerful Whitney Elk and Tutton. Whitney, are you ready to do this? Yeah, let's do it. All right, let's go. Whitney is a real estate investor, a consultant, and mentor. She's helping busy professionals transform their lives through passive real estate investing as the director of investor education with PassiveInvesting.com. Whitney, excited to have you on. Tell us a little bit about your personal life, more about your work, and why you do what you do. Yeah. So as you mentioned, I'm the director of investor education here at PassiveInvesting.com, but that's not where I started out. I didn't go to school for real estate. I actually studied uh, public health. Uh, I have my master's in public health and a PhD in community health and nutrition. And anyways, when, you, when we talk about why I do what I do is I firmly believe the lack of financial capability um, is a public health issue. And what do I mean by that? It's not just financial literacy. It's being able to take action upon that literacy. And so, you know, anybody can pick up a book and read about all of the, how money works and how they, they can use money to build their wealth and investments, but it's actually putting that into action and finding sound um, investments, right? Like I, I'm not, not uncorrelated to the stock market, stocks, bonds, and mutual fund, things that you can actually control that are hard assets like real estate, like businesses, um, to take charge of your financial future and to grow your wealth. And there's a myriad of other reasons why you'd want to do that too for cash flow, appreciation, tax benefits, tax diversification. But anyways, when you talk about why I do what I do is because I, you know, my background is in public health and I'm, I'm really trying to, uh, there's a myriad of ways that we can solve, you know, people's, uh, you know, the fundamental crises in the world. And one of them is like, what if everybody had access to to fund their lives the way that they wanted to fund them, um, had freedom like that. It, it, why, how much better of a world would we live in? And so, you know, that's why I do what I do here at PassiveInvesting.com is to help people untangle the 20 years of ups and downs and obstacles and trials that I've been to been through as a real estate investor and, you know, access those investments, you know, stand on the shoulder of giants, if you will, access those investments and build wealth for themselves. Well, I love it. And I think that that is a really, really important thing and really, really, really challenging, just like just like nutrition, financial, financial literacy and financial wellness, nutrition literacy and actual wellness. There's a big gap that exists between those two things. And the trick and success is helping people to actually close that gap. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, they say saying I studied Latin for eight years and, you know, a lot of people under know the quote, scientia atorvus s, which is knowledge is power. And that's actually not true. Knowledge is potential power. It's what we do with that knowledge. So eight years of Latin. Yeah. I was a glutton for punishment. Remember <laughs> I was going into medical school. So um, also I didn't have any desire as a high school student to take conversational Spanish. I was a little embarrassed getting up and speaking in front of people. <laughs> so a lot, a lot's changed in the past few years. I'm not going to say how many. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. So the, the actual Latin version of knowledge is power is, is what? Uh, scientia actoribus s. And it's, it's hard to say if that's the exact pronunciation because Latin is not a conversational language. So, but, yeah. but sort sort of like that anyway. Exactly. Yeah. Close. All right. So, you worked on closing that behavior gap when it comes to nutrition, and now helping people. And and I totally agree. You know, will having financial freedom and financial peace of mind solve a lot of the problems that we're facing? Who knows? But. I'd like to try. So I, I I think that the work that you're doing is very much aligned with what I'm interested in doing. How do we get people to take and apply knowledge? How do we get them to take and apply literacy? Well, it, part of it is actually ha that internal exploration, right? You know, having people understand what, you know, if we're talking about it from a uh, helping somebody invest into an asset like multifamily, self-storage, express car washes, you know, some of the first questions I ask are, what are your goals? What are your timeline? What's your risk tolerance? But really what those underlying questions are trying to get at, and this is something that anybody here can take and apply to their life, whether it's in real estate and investing or something else, it's what do you want? Why do you want it? 
And who do you have to become to get it? And whenever you, you know, ask that question, who do you have to become to get it? It's fundamentally addressing what skills do you need? Or excuse me, actually, first, what kind of mindset do you need to have? The world working for you or against you? You know, do you believe that there's scarcity or abundance, right? I mean, very important in today's society, divided society right now. And then what skills do you need to have? Do you have to have those skills or can you hire out those skills and bring them into your world? And then what kind of networks do you have to have? And those are the same questions that I help our investors, you know, apply, you know, in, in kind of a more micro environment when they look at their portfolios is, you know, what do you want? Do you need cash flow, equity, tax benefits, diversification? Like why, what are you trying to achieve? Are you trying to achieve financial independence, location independence, choice independence, um, choice freedom or impact freedom, right? What are you trying to achieve here? And then, you know, who do you have to become to get it? Like, do you have to kind of reorient, you know, uh, ditch the traditional American narrative we've all grown up with? Um, what skills do you need to put in place? Do you need to learn how to evaluate operators, markets, deals? And then, you know, what kind of networks do you need to have? Do you know who are the best operators are in the space? And how can you tell if you're working with somebody who's reputable or not? Powerful questions. When you ask people, what do you want? Why do you want it? Who do you have to become to get that? Is that easier for people to answer? Does it really vary? Um, well, you know, what do you want? Oftentimes, you know, somebody, it's easier for somebody to say what they don't want in life, mm -hmm. right? What are they, and really that's generally an indication of kind of like what they're running from or a pain in their life, right? So if somebody who's just now studying, studying out on their financial freedom journey, they're going to be like, um, maybe I want to take my family on vacation, or I don't want to work in a, in a cubicle for 40 years, or I'm tired of traveling, you know? 80 hours a week, right? So they'll tell you what they don't want, but you that's fine because that pain is gonna keep you unfortunately motivated more often than not than going for what you truly want in life, right? It's the thorn in the side that's gonna get you to make changes in your life. Um, but you really have to do orient to what you truly want. Otherwise you're gonna, you know, any path will get you there, right? <laughs> So we need to understand what kind of business that you want. This is how, when, especially when it pertains to real estate, if I ask somebody, what do you want? You know, they'll be like, oh, I, I, I want cash flow coming in. I want net worth. I, I want these things, you know, pertaining to money. But then they might go after invest in the right, wrong asset. So it doesn't meet their goals. Maybe they start flipping because so they're attracted to the dollar amount when they should, they don't want to be that time active in their investment. So they really should be doing something more passive. And then, you know, you know, digging into the other pieces, you know, really stems off of what do you want? So you have to really get extreme clarity there. But yeah, to answer your question more directly, do people, is that an easy question to answer? No, but I'll tell you this, once you sit down and really think about those questions, your want will probably change, especially after you hit different milestones on your journey, kind of kick the goalpost down the road, so to speak, milepost down the road. Um, you'll level up your goal, but your why rarely will change. Once you finally understand which of those freedoms in life you're trying to achieve uh, and what you value most, that will very rarely change. That makes a lot of sense. And I also am grateful and appreciative of doing that work up front and how you want to help people to go through that process of self-exploration and knowing full well that more often than not, people haven't started that process or at least a more formal process. We have passing ideas of what we do want. We probably know better what we don't want, but what is that? How does that actually line up? And if you're doing a good job, you want to be able to match people up with the appropriate opportunity based on the answer to lots of questions, not just Oh, I can make money flipping a house. Yeah. Otherwise you get somebody into the space that's drawn by numbers, right? So in, 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 talking very specifically about uh, you know, situations that I deal with on a daily basis, uh, I'll talk to investors that have had, held their own personal portfolios. So they're the, their operator, they chose their market. And so they're very attuned to looking at numbers. Maybe it could be somebody that has been investing in stocks 
bonds and mutual funds through the 401k. They're very used to looking at numbers, but you can't bring that same operational mindset into um, or that, that, that orientation into passive investing, because otherwise you'll just be looking at who has the prettiest numbers on the paper, right? You know, anybody can put those numbers on a pro forma, but how many of those teams can actually execute to achieve those returns? So that's where, you know, you really have to re help people reorient to what's real um, in the space and what they where they should be truly focused on. Yeah, well, I think that that certainly makes sense. How many different, I mean, the term passive investing, that's, that's a, a big term. There's lots of different opportunities. Mm -hmm. There's a oh, question in there somewhere. There, there's I don't, a question in there somewhere. Well, so, <laughs> and I think, you know, and I, I'm happy to feel the nebulous question here, right? So a lot of people are jump into real estate, you know, and, and they're like, oh, it's passively investing, but it, there's a scale, there's a sliding scale here. So if you're buying, you know, if you start flipping, let's start there. You start flipping your own houses. That's very active. Okay. Active income, active with your time. But then a lot of people get into buy and hold real estate. Maybe they move out of their primary residence and turn that into a rental, or they just specifically go buy a rental property. And they're like, yes, I'm passively invested. And I'm like, are you like the IRS says, yes, you are the income you earn is passive. We're going to treat it differently. But is think about how your time is being spent. You're probably searching for the, uh, uh, you know, the lending, the deal, the lending, um, you're managing the manager. If there's any rehab that needs to happen on the proper property, you're handling all of those decisions. You're deciding when it's getting repositioned. But then, like I said, it's a sliding scale. You can outsource more of those things, you know, or you can invest in somebody else's business that already has those things going. They find the deal, underwrite the deal. And, uh, they know the market. They can acquire lending. They can uh, perform the day-to-day -day operations on the deal. And those are the deals that I look into. And that, that's what we do here at PassiveInvesting.com is really make it true passive income for uh, in every sense of the word, according to the IRS, but also for an investor's time. So it's really hands off. I like it. And that's something that, again, maybe we haven't thought that all the way through. Is this passive? Am I investing my time, my attention, my energy, my money? Because that's really when you actually drill down and say, okay, on a day-to-day, -day, how much of these important resources of mine are going into the management of this passive investment? Oh, I have, I'm a, I'm guilty of doing that myself. I my husband and I scaled over 30 single family units and you know had enough income to replace most all of my income and most of his, but I just had another job is really all I did between you know sourcing the deals, performing the rehab, tenant placement, managing the manager, you know, even though I had property management, I was still very heavily involved in some of the management decisions. Um, you know, heaven forbid something happened on the property and there was an insurance claim, the property manager didn't handle that. I got to handle that. <laughs> that was their gift to me. So, um, you know, you know, and there's ways to deal with that, right? But you have to understand, are you, is that what you're in this for to build your own business? Some people are cut out for that. More power to them. Most people aren't. They, they have a higher and better use in their day job. Maybe they're a lawyer or a doctor or an engineer or a tech worker. And so they probably could put their energy into their day job, earning that active income there, and then deploying it into a truly passive investment. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. What, what an important thing to consider is what is the highest and best use of my resources, my time, my attention, my money, my energy, and if it's handling an insurance claim, well, then by all means do that. But it might be just doing your doctoring or your attorneying, attorneying or whatever it is that 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 you're doing. So being able to to figure that out. How do I know if I'm ready to start investing in, um, for lack of a better term, in an alternative asset class aside from my 401k in the stock market? Well, if you're invested in a 401k in the stock market already, you're ready to invest. Now, I think that the deeper question is there, um, do you believe in real estate, right? If you don't believe in real estate as an investment class, then no, this is not for you. But I would 
most people truly understand that majority of the millionaires and billionaires in the United States, and I, I dare say the world, have a good chunk of their wealth and resources in real estate. So there's a lot of power there. This isn't just you know, a new investment class that's popped up in the past hundred years. I mean, real estate's been around, you know, thousands of years. Um, so nothing about this is new. Uh, but if you can check that box to say, do I believe in real estate? Perfect. Now we're ready to have a conversation. And, and then it, we get down to like, what, how do you want to use your time? What do you want? Why do you want it? And then it, it, it's a matter of like, you know, under where you fall on that continuum with how active you want to be with the investment. Uh, and most people, you know, they get lured in by the numbers. So they feel they're trading that, that, you know, some of their time to earn some of the dollars. They feel that that feels right because that's what we've all been conditioned to do. Um, but the more somebody gets experience in the game, they, the light bulb kind of comes on. They're like, oh, wait a second. I, I'm actually going to earn more more than likely going into a well-vetted passive deal with an amazing operator, because that's one quote unquote heavy lift up front and then, you know, can pay dividends on the back end. Makes a lot of sense. Well, Whitney, thank you so much for coming on. Where can people learn more about you and how can they engage with passiveinvesting.com? Yeah, absolutely. You can find me at passiveinvestingwithwhitney.com. And that's a one-stop shop. I've got a free ebook there for everybody to download and um, that goes through some of the ins and outs of what we discussed here today on how to get uh, launched into a passive investment if that is what you want to do. And then you can also get access to my calendar and we can talk all things real estate. Love it. Well, if you enjoyed this much as I did, show Whitney your appreciation and share today's show with a friend who also appreciates good ideas, go to Passive Investing with Whitney, W-H-I-T-N-E-Y dot com and pick up your copy of the ebook that will go deeper into what we've been talking about today. And if it piques your interest, grab some of Whitney's time and answer these questions for yourself, which are, Whitney, if I could find it on my notes, what do you want? Why do you want it? And who do you have to be to actually make that happen? So I love it. Thanks again, Whitney. Thank you. And until next time, remember, do your part by doing your best.